Hi, I'm Don Segal. This video is about a four-stroke engine that is popular in Warbird racing, both RC Pro Warbird racing and the California, Northern California racing classes. It's called the YS-115FZWS. The WS stands for Warbird Special. The engine is built for higher nitro and um, a lot of people really like this engine. I've had it out of the box to trial fit it on airplanes and to get familiar with it. But I've got it back in the box and I want to show you how it comes and give you a little bit of information that you may find useful. I'm also going to talk about the break-in procedure and then I will do a break-in video and then we'll see how this thing performs. So, in the box, we have the engine. It has an exhaust header and it has a little bushing that goes into the exhaust port and the header has a fitting that holds the exhaust pipe in place. I'll talk about the exhaust in a minute. Let me get this out of the way. The threads on the shaft are 8 millimeter by 1.0 threads. Uh, you can easily find adapters for the 8 millimeter by 1 uh, threads and prop nuts and various other accessories that you may want to use. As a matter of fact, when I'm breaking engines in, I like to use the Dubro spinner prop nut. After putting on the locking prop nut, I put the spinner in front of it and uh, that keeps me from having to use a big spinner and makes it real easy to change propellers and uh, do other things. This engine has a pressurized fuel system. It has a regulator that has pressure that comes from the crankcase and that goes to a pressure line and on the pressure line you use a check valve and it actually puts as much as 10 to 12 pounds of pressure on the tank. This requires some special tank preparation. I often wrap the tanks in uh, strapping tape to keep them from uh, expanding too much and to also protect them from rubbing against the surface. Um, one thing I forgot is the needle valve. The needle valve goes right here by the regulator and it has a set screw so you can easily put an extension on the needle valve. The supercharger is actually in the crankcase and there are rotating parts in there that pressurize the chamber and um, it greatly adds to the power of this engine. Now I don't have a glow plug in so I can relatively easily turn it over. Um, and um, these are really nice engines. They're, they um, are a little more expensive than some other brands but the performance for the displacement um, is generally very hard to beat. I'm going to be putting this engine on a world model Spitfire 40. That airplane was designed to handle this engine. The engine weighs about 25 to 26 ounces, which is uh, a little more than a 40 size engine. But that airplane has uh, solid tail surfaces and is built to stand up to uh, this engine and similar size engines. So I'll show that in another video. Um, in terms of the exhaust, if you 
are flying at a club where you have to have a muffler. There is a muffler for the 91, the YS91, um, that um, you can use. And this muffler extension is actually 10 thousandths bigger. I need to take that bronze bushing out. Uh, is actually 10 thousandths bigger than the other exhaust pipe. So if you put just the pipe on, and so you can put the muffler on, you can just leave the uh, exhaust pipe in place and simply put on the muffler when you're flying at a club or in a situation where you've got to have reduced noise. The club that is nearest my house uh, requires mufflers and has pretty strict sound limitations. So it's a good thing that I can um, put a muffler on it. Old Julian Airport is outside of Greensboro, North Carolina, and they have no noise restrictions and they have a 500 foot paved runway. So I plan to fly my warbirds there for practice and uh, we'll see if we can possibly have some warbird races there in the future. I've talked to Richard Verano at YS Engines about this engine and he's given me some break-in tips. One is to use a 14 by 10 APC propeller for the break-in. Um, you turn the needle valve all the way in and run it out four turns and uh, make sure you use a fuel filter on your fuel line and make sure you filter your fuel. A good fuel to use for break-in is a 20 to 30 percent fuel that has at least 20 percent oil in it. Um, cool power 30 percent heli fuel will work. Um, Rich's Brew has fuel for um, the YS engines and uh, I'm getting some of that so I'm anxious to try out that f fuel. On this kind of engine you don't want to run a plastic spinner. A plastic spinner does come with a lot of arse but if you use this engine don't use the plastic spinner for a number of reasons. This is the Dave Brown Vortec spinner. It's a three and a quarter. That's the size that fits on the uh, Spitfire 40 and also the, the World Models P51 Mustang 46, the Dago Red and the Voodoo. Um, it's a nice spinner. It has a bushing that you need to put in uh, the hull and drill out instead of using the jam nut just put the main nut on tighten it down real tight then you can put on the extension and uh, double lock it and the spinner will have plenty of thread for the screw if you use that longer extension and you'll be set up with a nice spinner um, that's appropriate for this engine. In terms of the break-in procedure, you want to turn the needle valve out four turns and make sure your tank set up properly uh, with a fuel filter and that you are filtering your fuel. And it's preferable to run this engine on a test stand. This is the PSP test stand. I don't have the hold downs on it, but 
I'm a big fan of the PSP test stands. I've been using them for a long, long time. And um, it works fine with this engine. Um, other test stands like the small Taytone test stand that um, McCulloch sells. McCulloch can be sells the Taytone test stands. The small doesn't fit. The probably, probably the big one does work. But I don't have a big one, so I can't say for sure. But if you've never run a pressurized fuel system before, it's a good idea to run the engine on a test stand. And uh, there's a urban myth that it's not good to run uh, YS engines on a test stand. And I've talked to Richard Verano about that. And he says running on a test stand is no problem uh, because the engine gets plenty of air. Uh, as long as you're not using a spinner on I wouldn't use a spinner while you're doing the break-in. So, that's an introduction to the uh, YS-115FZ WS. I'll be making a break-in video. Hope you'll watch and uh, check out the Spitfire video. And um, thanks for watching.